Gruesome Magazine. Hello, once again, I am your host, Doc Rotten, and this is Gruesome Magazine, where we review the very latest in streaming and video on demand home movies and now theatrical films as well. Maybe Whoa. not that. Each week, my co hosts Jeff Moore, Chris Cleveland, Dave Dreyer, Christopher G. Moore, and myself will take a look at various spooky, scary, and gory genre offerings. Tonight, we're reviewing Orphan First Kill. I'm saying I'm going to say that again Orphan <laughs> First Kill, the film we never thought we'd hear of and see. Uh, it's going to be available in theaters and streaming on Paramount Plus. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Uh, joining me tonight is my co-host, starting off with award-winning filmmaker, Christopher G. Moore. How are you doing, sir? Hello, Daddy. You want to draw with me? <laughs> that, I want to draw with you, Daddy. That is creepy in all kinds <laughs> of ways. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'm going to have nightmares now, just of that alone. It's going to be like a little young Christopher G. Moore running around. Come on, Daddy. 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 <laughs> Let's go on a trip, Daddy. <laughs> oh, man, running out the crew. Is the one and only Dave. Dreyer, Dave, how you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I'm all so well. Happy. So happy you are here. I'm sir. actually a uh, 13 year old girl. Stop! Stop! <laughs> you are not. <laughs> I uh, am a 13 year old girl. That explains a lot. Don't tell me oh, I'm not. Oh no! That explains don't. a lot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I do not know these two. All right, what we're doing tonight. Is we're going to review Orphan First Kill. We're going to start off giving you our first impressions test. First impressions will be spoiler free. Then we're going to dive into the discussion and uh, we'll probably spoil a few things. So keep that in mind. And then we'll wrap things up with our final thoughts, our score one to five, and our favorite scene. And of course, we hope you enjoy not only this review, but many others that we have on the site. And if you do, please hit the like, the subscribe, and share with a friend. It will do wonders for us and help us reach 5,000 subscribers. Yes. Share with us, Daddy. Yes. Share. yes. <laughs> um, of course, we want to hear your comments down below. What did you think of Orphan First Kill? Of course, it is a sequel to Orphan, which Orphan. came out over a decade ago. And In 2009, was, I think, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, which was surprisingly good. It was probably one of the better films that year. It had a huge surprise in it, a huge twist. Um, and uh, this film is a prequel to us. So let's dive into the card and see what's in store for us. All right, Orphan First Kill 2022 from Dark Castle is available streaming on Paramount Plus beginning August 19, 2022. Synopsis is after orchestrating a brilliant escape from Estonia psychiatric facility, Esther travels to America by impersonating the missing daughter of a wealthy family. It is directed by William Brent Bell. Written by David Cagslehall, David Leslie Johnson McGoldrick, and Alex Mace. And of course, it's based on characters created by Alex Mace. The cast includes Isabel Furman, Julia Stiles, uh, Russ, is it Russell? Russell, Russell Sutherland, Hiro Kana, Kanagawa, Matthew Finland, Samantha w Wakes, Walks, 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 David Lawrence Brown. Why am I having trouble with that? Len. <laughs> Lauren Cochran. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be here all week. All right. Um, yeah, I can't wait to hear your first impressions. Um, and you listening out there probably have an idea, based on just your expectations, what those first impressions may be. Are there surprises lying ahead? There very well just might be. Let's find out. Dave Dreyer, what was your first impression of Orphan? First, uh, My first impression is... How can this movie be this damn good? No, that was what, my first uh, impression. Uh, you know, um, again, I know we're not doing anything spoilery. That, that, I'm assuming if you're watching Orphan First Kill, you've seen the original Orphan. I'm, I'm going to. I, I think. I think it's so, fair that we are. So, we are you know, the, we are safe to... the original Orphan, the 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 surprise, the twist was the big, was the big. Oh my God! Right, and and they've managed to pull that off again in this one which seems almost impossible that they could do that, mm -hmm. but they absolutely do. And just the fact that they pulled the wool over my eyes and they do this, I was just like, how can I not love this? I have to love this now. You know, there's no way I could not love this. And Isabel Furman is, is great. I mean, again, she's what? 20 years? No, 25. Years she was yeah. she's 25 now. 
Yeah, but I mean, she's um, she's ten years older than she was when she did the original, and she still looks the same. Uh, you know, so uh, I'd ask Doc because it's been a while since I've seen this. We've had the screeners for a while, or I had my screener for a while, and uh, it timed out. I wanted to watch it again today before we did this because uh, I wanted to refresh my memory on it. Uh, but I, uh, Doc and I were talking off uh, uh, off show, and I, I was like. You know, is she like a, a little person, or is she, or, or is she <laughs> you know? And you were, he were saying that they use like forced perspective and stuff to, yes. to make her appear body smaller. But uh, it, it's really kind of amazing what they've what they've managed to achieve here. So my first impression is, I really like this. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, I, I I was not expecting that. Well, actually, I was before we. Were recorded but i wasn't expecting to hear from that earlier so that's for sure <laughs> and surprising me even further is christopher g moore so what was your first impression of orphan first go i loved it daddy <laughs> um, uh, I, I i you know what I, I i i i didn't expect a lot from this you know uh because we have the bar was some, low <laughs> well, well yeah, and, and it just and it almost seems like it, it's like a cash grab you know it's like oh, we have this ip so let's just make another one and then we'll release it on our new streaming service, that kind of stuff. Um, so I didn't have my, my expectations were not very high, but that doesn't mean that this is a bad, this is just a, you know, because my expectations are very low that it, it you know, it could be a crappy movie and I would enjoy it. But no, this is a really well-crafted movie. Now, I mean, it is, there were, I mean, it is kind of, there are moments where it's, it's shot on almost like a video I don't know. It, there's parts of it that feel very video-y and I, I don't know what kind of camera they shot it on, but there's moments. And so I was like, Oh man. But I think as it goes along, I mean, the opening's almost a little bit like uh, malignant a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. okay. Um, and, uh, and then, and then there, I mean, again, like you think, Oh, we can't top the big twist of the first one. Holy crap. Did they top that? And I, I mean, it, we've all three of us have seen a buttload of movies. Okay. And we, we sort of know where things are going and we don't, and when we're thrown, when our expectations are thrown out the window, like a dead body, we're like, Holy crap. Uh, I can't believe this. Um, <laughs> so I, I mean, my, my mouth was a gape and I was like, and then I was kind of excited. Ooh, this is an interesting twist. And I love that. Um, but yeah. And, and, and also I think the cool thing they did, it, this isn't one of those things where we have like, uh, uh, we like like a Colin Robinson type situation from what we do in the shadows, where you have like a, like a little kid with her face on it, um, which is done for comedic effect and that. But in this, they they do such a great job of either just having when she's acting to camera, she's they they either have like uh the other actress higher up or her lower down that. My but the the best part, and this isn't giving anything away, but towards the beginning when she's when she's trying to uh, leave that building in the very opening scene, mm -hmm. they do what they call a text switch, which is a famous type thing to where a character, an actor, will go behind something and then someone else will replace them. And they did it two times in one long scene. Oh wow! And because because then you. Cause you'd, you'd see like from the back of the head of a little girl, she'd go behind something. The camera would go like this way. And then the real actress would come out and look, and then she'd go behind it. And then, and then they'd switch it from the little girl again. And, and then, then they had the actor go behind it again and it sells it. And they do, they do that a lot where the, if it's behind the head, it's usually sometimes a little girl uh, or they'll just change the height of actors either her or maybe she was like sitting on her knees at certain points but they did such a great job in that you believe that she was that little girl and they didn't really have to do any kind of weird stuff to make that happen any kind of weird cgi that just makes it puts it in that uncanny valley so um but yeah and there's some really fun camera work in this as well like almost hitchcockian there's a there's a thing involving a rat that i was <laughs> Mm, yes. You, you, yeah, you, know, yeah, was... you know me and my transitions, Doc. I love me some transitions. <laughs> and there's that was I was like, I, that's that's like something I would do. And I was like, I approve. You get the Christopher G. Moore <laughs> approval rating on that. <laughs> uh, nice. But yeah, I I this was a fun film. You know, I mean, towards the end, there's a little bit of um, I'll say CGI fire, and that doesn't it's very noticeable, but it didn't take me out of the film. But overall, I thought that the uh, 
yeah, the orphan girl, the actress like that did such a great job and even the parents and stuff. And, and again, I, I, whoever wrote the story, kudos, because you, you, you've, you've taken a thing that we, we thought was just going to be a retread of the first one. And it puts a different spin on it. That's so interesting and so delectable. So I, yeah, I love this. Yeah. Julia Stiles as, as the, the rich mom, uh, is really good. And Isabel Furman, of course, uh, you know, is bringing, bringing back the goods and she's doing a great job. Now, uh, now William Brent Bell directed this and now, you know, we've, we've reviewed many, if not all of his films, uh, here on a Grizzly magazine and H and R, uh, devil inside. I don't know if you remember that back in 2012 when we were first starting and that was a stinker of a January film. Uh, he did a werewolf film that got called Where, which got little notice. And then he did The Boy and The Boy 2, one of Christopher's favorite films. No, I'm just kidding. And then uh, Separation, which, okay, so, you know, he, he <laughs> you might say he has a reputation. Um, so I I was looking forward to this because, you know, I'm an optimist. I, I'm looking forward to anything to come out and let's, let's see if it's any good. But I wasn't expecting it to be any good. I was expecting it to be trash. And it's it isn't. It's actually competent. It actually is it's probably his best feature for by a long shot. Um I'm not really sure if I would make I would call this a good film though. I think it's kind of good cheese. I mean, it is kind of cheesy, it's kind of campy. Um you know, it, 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 it asks a lot of its audience, but I think it delivers on that ask, right? It, it supports that ask with with uh, some of the camera work, some of the trickery. Um, and uh, I think, you know, Mr. Bell has grown as a director. So <laughs> I, I was, I think really what won me over, well, the, okay, so there's, the, the opening is a lot of fun. We'll get into that here shortly. Uh, and it establishes, you know, the scenario that we're expecting. And then there's a twist, you know, uh, which I didn't know if they were going to do a twist. You know, you kind of expect it to be a twist, but they do something like Dave and Christopher have said that really makes this a unique entry into this film. It is, it's, it's a, it's a twist on the twist and it's, it it made it a lot of fun. It made it the it, it it had instant tension. It had, um, you know, you, you <laughs> it questioned who you're rooting for. There was a lot of really fun things happening, um, and um, there's some good kills. There's some good blood. Um, yeah, it, it's this is a this film is much better than it has any right to be <laughs> given that it's a prequel to a film from I, over 10 years ago i would refute what you said i think it's a good film i, you I think, think it, you think you would I call think, it a good I, film I, yeah I, I think it's better than the first i i think it's i think it's a well-crafted i i think it's a well-crafted film okay um and and, and th that if you think about it it further informs the title um kind of does uh <laughs> but yeah i i, I I mean, it's stylist stylistically, it's got some really great shots and uh, it's got some really great acting moments with the different characters. Uh, it's It's got one needle drop that made me smile from ear to ear, because if you know a certain song, it was initially <laughs> written for a horror film and they changed it and it, it became a big hit for flash dance <laughs> uh and uh you know I, I don't know i i i yeah i mean it's it, it's a good film in that it's 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 that enjoyable b-movie type stuff you know what i mean yeah it is but but i i think for me it's not just the b-movie but it's stylistically it's got some really great shots i mean there's some there's like there's like wide shots or shots down long, you know, uh, uh, tunnels. There's, there's, I mean, there's a really cool shot with the piano where she's looking and half of her face. Mm. It's got the mirror and half of her face is the kid that, you know, she's trying to replace. It's like there, there's some really fun camera work that works really well for the, for the scenes and for the, the, um, you know, just the, the maniacal elements, you know, of it and the tension. 
Absolutely. Um, I mean, they, 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 this is not your traditional, like use of the camera. They do a lot of stuff overhead under wide, you know, I mean, there's a lot of really cool stuff they do with the camera that really works for, for this. I mean, it, I mean to me, it, 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 there's elements that felt very De Palma-ish at, at, at points. And that's saying a lot considering how much I don't like any of the other films. Yeah. This guy's even, yeah I would, I would, I would agree that William Brent Bell has made the most out of this. What would, we would look going into it as a, as a cash grab and it has made something that is far different than those expectations. I definitely agree with this. I was surprised. I was surprised how I was locked into the movie. Um, I just struggle with saying it's good. Now the original director, um, <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to mispronounce his name, but he, he also directed uh, uh, the shallows, which is a film I really like. Uh, he did a number of films like Unknown and Nonstop, Run All Night with Liam Neeson. <laughs> he did Jungle Cruise a few years back, and he's doing Black Adam this year. So that director has like gone off in an entirely different direction. Uh, good for him. Um, William Bent Braille, on the other hand, has um, you know more horror films coming out, which is cool. We need people to make horror films, but that's uh, we. If you didn't know, we're in. We're full into the spoilers, so um, we've got to talk about this twist. And I thought that how they handle the twist and who's involved with the twist and who's not involved with the twist, I thought was really smart. Um, and it really kind of says like, I thought it had, a, you know, it, 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 it gave all the characters um, their own direction and their own, you know, decisions were based on this twist. And I thought it worked. So do we want to just go ahead and, and spit out the twist? I, I don't know that we do. I mean, I. I okay. I, well, I, 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 I almost mean, want I, people to, 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 what, to find the twist yeah. by watching it. I, I, I feel like, to me, that's such a big part of my enjoyment is that I was right. not expecting the twist. I, okay. I almost feel like. But, but I, I will say that the. Um, how they how they put a spin on the orphan character. Yes. yes. And, and how, how she has to deal with things differently. This way, this time I think works really well to where you almost feel sympathy for her. I know it almost makes the, <laughs> the, the first film a, a cakewalk for her. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it, I mean, it's like, I mean, you still think she's a horrible person, but it's, there sometimes it's the, the, uh, the, was it the, least of the worst <laughs> type mm. situation but yeah i i but i i will say that the twist is such an integral part for what makes this work for me it's i, I almost don't want to spoil it for people all right well we won't yeah. we, we won't do that dave uh one of the things that you know you always bring to the table is the gore we we get some blood here um most of it's kind of wait in the beginning with the with the escape if you will yes um what what did you think of it did it was it did it satisfy your need for the crimson fluids yeah i mean i think it did I, again i i came away with from this more more in awe of uh, of the twist of the writing mm -hmm. uh you know and how it uh because the, the twist comes uh, roughly the halfway mark wouldn't you say like between the third and the halfway yeah yeah, yeah, yeah something, something like that, that. yeah and it, but it, but it's it well totally, too. Yeah. yeah it totally changes it totally changes not only uh the story, but uh, the performances from the people Dynamics. involved. Yeah, yeah. and and uh, and it just blew me away so much. I I think I even mentioned it uh, to you guys before the show. It's like I'm having a hard time recalling separate scenes in this <laughs> because it was just it, it, the the uh, it, it changes up so radically with the twist that it, it just I, I want to see. I need to see this again. Yeah. So that I feel well, like I can give it a, a, a proper, uh, a proper review, you know, because I'm still just kind of still so blown away. It, well, it's, it's very sixth sense, I guess. And in, in that respect to where you, you almost want to go back and watch the beginning stuff because there's, it's got to be a little bit different. But yeah, I mean, it's, it, it changes so many things that it, it's, it's a rarity for in some films, you usually that kind of review would happen the very like last, 20 minutes or something you know or five and, minutes and, even yeah yeah and 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 uh and this because it happened so early it because it changes the whole dynamics of everything it changes 
it adds it, a lot of different things. It adds a tremendous amount of suspense and tension. Yeah, because, yeah. Because yeah. It, now it's different. It's not, it, and it, it yeah, you, you, it upturns our expectations of what, you know, what we think it's going to be and what the character is going to go through and what she, what her goals are, you know, it changes everything. And I thought the tension after that was, was thick and, and uh, the, it actually caught my attention and made me kind of sit up and, wa and watch the rest. Of, I mean, I was enjoying it up until then just on the performances alone. But once that happened, I was like, Oh, I got, you know, I was, it got me. It, it was like, we're going to be in. Right. Well, and, and I will say also, I mean, uh, to, to me, this is this is the ultimate child's play. <laughs> you know, this is child's play yeah. without a doll. I mean, and and <laughs> I think I think more than anything, it's also kind of gleeful to see the because because the, the, we know what the orphan character is. We know what this young girl is, um, or or not young girl, but th th we know that this girl is not what she is. Mm -hmm. It opens up so many different scenarios to where she you can see how she manipulates people. She's almost like a little pint sized Hannibal Lecter to some degree. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that the part like where that. she's she's like uh, preying on that the the guard, you know, and that insane that insane asylum or whatever. Mm. Uh, and she almost and you know it's almost kind of creepy because. She knows she's like playing off the oh I'm I'm like this little girl and you know I'm gonna wear this dress for you and it's like oh god, um, but it, it is kind of interesting all the little different things that she does to manipulate people to steal from people to, uh, she just how's, plays that game she's a little con person you know how she trains the other inmates to do her bidding, yeah yeah she manipulates other people to do and and again that's why she's very Hannibal Lecter in that respect mm. you know it's like Migs in an Excel and and the uh, and you know, science of lambs, and and I and that's what I love about it because, she, but at the same time, you're kind of like you're not like you're not exactly shocked by what she's doing, but you're like, oh god. Yeah. <laughs> it, it also helps that the actresses that is playing uh, Esther is now in her twenties, so you can get well, away with a it little does. bit more physical but, 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 things. But there's also a morbid sense of humor about it too, because mm -hmm. there's that one lady that she rides in the car with without her knowing and then she beats the crap out of her and she's like and she's still alive it's like oh usually you're dead after the first and <laughs> she beats the crap out of her and it's like i mean it's it's kind of funny even though it's horrible but i mean there, there's that sort of there's a sense of humor about her as well because she is kind of like that person that you love to hate type character yeah, or she puts on the sunglasses, lights a cigarette, and drives away. Oh, well, that, that's like, again, <laughs> that scene made me laugh because, again, if you know the history of the song Maniac from Flashdank, it was originally <laughs> made, I think it was made for Maniac or it was made for uh, like a slasher film, and they didn't want to use it. So then he just repurposed it and used it for Flashdance. And now people think you're just dancing in leg warmers, but it was actually originally, I think the, I think the guy who did Maniac said he had the original lyrics to it or something. But mm -hmm. then it's kind of funny. It works perfectly. <laughs> Uh, and then that scene where she's putting on she's you're know, putting on lipstick and smoking and <laughs> it does give it to, yeah it, it works it works it's yeah this gives us let's go ahead and dive into our final thoughts our score one to five and our favorite scene dave why don't you start us off sir yeah and this one is kind of hard to to discuss without giving away the the uh the surprise because the surprise is so much of what makes this so fun to watch so take our word for it just watch it it's, it's a it's a good movie it's a ton of fun um uh, everyone everyone now is going to be like i seen it coming i knew what no, was going to no, happen no, yeah no, like, no you didn't you lying sacks um favorite <laughs> uh, favorite scene i am going to go with uh and this for whatever reason this one is the one that sticks in my mind from all this and it's not a particularly actually it's not bloody at all but uh it, it just shows you the depths of the uh the madness, I guess. And that's the, uh, the train scene where we get, and again, you don't want to say too much, but, uh, Esther is, uh, is going to, uh, is going to push someone in front of a train and she is thwarted by a, uh, by a passerby who just happens to walk by it right at the moment. But it, it kind of plays into that De Palma thing that you were talking about, Christopher, because yeah. the, the way it's shot and you see her rounding the corner and them you know, them standing there and, you know, the whole thing. And then boom, out of nowhere comes this pedestrian, to, you know, inadvertently just save two people's life. and has no idea <laughs> that anything just happened. I just thought it was really well 
constructed and uh, and done. But that's really the only thing I can think of that doesn't give away too much. Doesn't give away, too much. you know, to to ruin all the fun, which is a surprise. So kudos to whoever wrote this. Uh, I, I think they did a great job of uh, of making a, a, a great uh, a great movie out of something that, like Doc said, perhaps doesn't have a, a right to be so. Did you give us a score? I don't think I did. I am going to give it a four out of five. A four out of five. Who would have thunk? All right. Yep. Christopher G. Moore, sir. What is your final thoughts, your score, and your favorite scene? Uh, by the way, the cinematographer was a cinematographer for Possessor. So, and that explains a lot with a lot of the visual stuff. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I was pleasantly surprised by this film. I, I didn't, again, I did not expect a lot. I expect it to be sort of a, you know, color by numbers type situation. And uh, and it sort of took it in places I didn't expect. I, I thought the cinematography, the the stylistic way it does a lot of things felt very, very De Palma-ish, a little bit of Hitchcock. I mean, and there's a, there's elements of Psycho in this as well. The ending is almost oh, like yes, the yes. ending of Psycho. Yep. It's it's just without minus the the car being pulled up yeah. uh, from the water, um, and I I mean I think I think they did such a great job in sort of like not only doing a lot of the cool visual flares with the camera work, but also just the the twist of the storyline, which which gave a whole lot more to uh, fleshed out the characters in different ways you didn't expect. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I was yeah. I mean, granted, like I said, the, the even though the, I thought the cinematography was great, it, it, I did notice that it seemed almost like a video quality at times. So I don't know what kind of camera they used, um, but and there was a few things with CGI stuff. Especially there's a there's a fire that happens without giving anything away. There's a fire that happens, and there's like fake ashes and fake stuff that yes, yes, that, that looks fake. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't, it didn't pull me out of it. Cause it, it all, but also there's, there's moments where there's really cool shots and stuff where people are framed. Yeah. It's the very, the, the ending's very Hitchcocky and in that respect, like where to go kind of thing. Oh, yeah. very, very much, very, very much. And so I, and I, I appreciate that because anytime anybody can sort of put a different spin on sort of the Hitchcocky and elements, sort of like De Palma used to do this, this, I mean, this feels probably more De Palma than Hitchcock because it's almost like, De Palma doing Hitchcock, and so this is them, you know, this doing a version. Brent Bell that. doing De Palma, who did yeah, but but it, but also has that De Palma. <laughs> yeah, it also has that sort of uh, 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 raising cane or, or any of those type of uh, dress to kill type things. If dress mm -hmm. to kill was about a little kid, uh, <laughs> so like yeah, that. it had it has those elements, and it really works. Um, so I was really surprised, you know, and and even even how they. Uh, although I, it was one, it is one of those things to where it's like anytime anybody uses any kind of something that could be used as a weapon, you're like, uh oh, <laughs> Chekhov's crossbow. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, I enjoyed the hell out of this. I, I, I'm I'm gonna give it a. You are? Are you? Will you? What's he gonna do, folks? I'm gonna give it a four point two five. Oh my god! I really? No way, I, really? I, I, you know what? Because wow. because I'm I'm one of these people. It doesn't necessarily have to be the the uh, what is it called? Uh, uh, Tarantino says like like Jaws is the best movie ever. Is it the best film ever? But it's the best movie ever. And and okay. I think this is a, this is a really good movie. You know, is it going to be compared to like Citizen Kane? No. But it's got more style than a lot of horror films out there right now. Okay, and that, that, to me, as a filmmaker, you've you done a good job when you've done that. Um, there's a lot of different scenes or at least uh, shots that I could just say is like the best. i would be hard pressed to pick specific like shot, you know, things like like I mentioned, there's a really cool uh, uh, which is very Hitchcocky. And there's a really cool thing with involving a, a, a rat. <laughs> and I was like, I like that. Um and, and, and there's other things. Well, I, I'm going to say um, favorite scene. Hmm. I, you know, I'm, I, I, I like, even though it's early on, I love the scene where she's playing the piano and she's looking at the picture of the little girl that she's going to replace. Mm. And then her, her face um, 
and then there's like a mirror right next to it where half of her face is in that. And then she's playing a piano with her bloody hands, leaving blood all over the, the piano. And it's such a beautiful, grotesque scene. Oh, I like that. Uh, and Good that, choice. that really so sh- also shows her sort of like her, uh, twisted nature and and how she's you know she's one person you know she wants to people to think that she's with this one person but she's actually this other she's just very two-faced and so that's a visually to be able to show that but also having her playing a piano which also feels very Hannibal Lecter too you know mm, it kind of does yeah stuff, I didn't think about so. that yeah yeah so I, I'll have to say that's probably but the, I could probably pick a lot of different other scenes you know uh, especially with the needle drop <laughs> The needle drop. I, I like the needle drop idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. All right. I, I think there's three things you can say. This is easily Brent Bell's, William Brent Bell's uh, best film. Uh, it is much better than it has any right to be. <laughs> and it is, I I, I mean, you your guys are saying it's actually a really good film. I think it's just can't be good fun. I mean, this is, yeah. it embraces the horror element and embrace, it knows what it has to do to be unique in the fact that it's a prequel to a, a film with a big, huge twist and it ding somehow it steps up and does the job. And, um, I, um, I, I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Um, I, I was originally going to give it a three, seven, five, but I think you guys have talked me into a four and I'm kind of embarrassed by that. <laughs> ding. Um, so My phone's dinging, but I can't it find it. I don't know where it is. <laughs> Your magical dinging phone. Uh, I so I'm I I don't know. I don't know how this film got to be this good. And uh, so it's on Paramount Plus. Check it out and let us know what you think. So my favorite scene, actually, there's there's a number of them you could choose, mm-hmm. uh, especially early on. There there's some early on scenes when she's in the uh, the asylum and. Um, like when you first see her and the lights are blinking on and off and stuff is really there. I mean, it's really creepy and, um, and how she has, you know, like trained other inmates to do her bidding, you know, Hey, and she throws the treat to her. It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like, well, this, you, 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 it really gives you the idea of how smart she is and what she's doing and calculated and stuff. And it really establishes that character in an entirely different way than the character was established in the first film that we saw. But I would say that later on in the film, it it actually ended up having a really good finale. Um, and I thought it stuck the landing. And that's a big part of the film, because if it doesn't stick the landing, that's what you walk away with, right? A lot of times you'll go, uh, it wouldn't have been good, but they fucked it up, right? But no, I think this one does a good job. And I'm choosing an element of that as my favorite scene. And that's when the father has to make a choice. <laughs> between one character and another character and um it was tense it was for a horror film true to the character i thought um you know, especially the father who's you know has a different perspective than many other characters in here and um and it was shot really well um i thought uh and of course it paid off really well too with a nice thud <laughs> I'll just put it that way. Um, and nice then it bud. and then and then it and it continued to pay off after that. And I I I don't know. I was I I I enjoyed that. I I thought that somehow <laughs> I don't want to say they made her the hero, <laughs> but somehow they 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 shook things up a little bit. Um and and a Kind of the way you like ding the way you like Han- <laughs> Hannibal Lecter in the Hannibal show, right? They kind of yeah. shook it up in, in that respect where you you see the character more than just the villain that they are. So it was kind of I don't know. It, I, I'm overthinking it, but had a good time with it. Um I guess I guess we're saying if you have Paramount Plus, catch it. Well, this this film knows what it's trying to do. You know, it, 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 it's not trying to be anything else. It's, it's telling its story in a fun way. And so, mm-hmm. and I think that's, that's all you want in a film, right? You just want, want it to be enjoyable. And this, this definitely has that sort of like this, this feel, I mean, this definitely has that sort of nineties. It does know, kind of have the nineties yeah, yeah, sensibility, yeah. you know, like uh hand the rock to cradle type stuff, which the original <laughs> orphan had. Yeah. Um, but, but this, but yeah, but it, it doesn't pretend to be anything else. But at the same time, it has that nice little, little visual flair about it. And 
and uh and that and and, and you know a script that that you know that does a great job in taking it a different direction none of us really expected and that's i mean that's that's saying a lot because a lot of these films are just you know I, sequels are always just repeats you know yeah it makes me wonder if this was greenlit and they just over you know they they produced a great script or did they come up with a good script and they greenlit it based on the script i wonder which way i know but i i think for me we got this and prey coming out on streaming services i w i think these would have been great movies to see in a theater with a group of people <laughs> would have been yeah would have been <laughs> can't argue that's that uh, and that's kind of sad it's like yeah there's all these great movies now like this that should have had a little bit of a run in theaters before it got released on streaming you know so mm -hmm. If, if it, go watch it, you know. Yeah. Well, that, that speaks to the the environment that that we're in now post COVID. So it's interesting, interesting to see how these things. But it's yeah, what great con, what a great year for horror films. All right, guys, uh, we need to wrap this up. Uh, Christopher, Dave, thank you so much for joining me. This was a lot of fun. Uh, maybe more fun than we expected. This podcast. <laughs> more fun than it has. Been. <laughs> it was it was so good, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> all right with that note let's say good night good night good night daddy <laughs>